Okay. Hola a todos, everyone. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you all for coming. I uh, really appreciate this opportunity to come and speak in here. Um, so half of my life in high school, I was in India. So I was brought up in, in British English, right, you know, pretty much. And half of my life, higher education and everything was in the US, so more of a, you know, American English. So my accent can be very different, and uh, I can speak so fast, and I know some of some of you are translating in Spanish, so hopefully you can understand. Uh, and I'll talk about the opportunities of, at the micro level and at the macro level uh, specific to the tourism industry. And obviously some of the challenges and concerns that we face uh, during the process uh, that I want to share, and also key takeaways and insights uh, you know, on everything what, what I'm going to speak, but also, as you all know, some of the speakers already shared what's going around. So it's good, uh, but I only have 20 minutes, so it's going to be quick, <laughs> and hopefully, uh, but I'll make it short and sweet. Uh, before I start my presentation, I want to start with the human anatomy. Uh, I don't know how many of you use the hand anatomy. Uh, if you all know our hands, we have two views. Uh, the one view here is called a dorsal view, right? And this one is called a palmar view. How many of you know that? Uh, so if you, if, you want, if you want to open your hands in a palmar view, Right? Everybody? Uh, one hand, just one hand with palm of view. So if you want to change from palmar view to dorsal view, what do you do? You just twist. So we are, you know, we're created and designed in a way that it's easy to twist. You don't need to really worry. You don't, you don't really worry about easy to twist. But if you really don't want to twist your arm from dorsal to palmar, so let's start with the palmar view, everyone. Right? And now we don't want to twist our arm. So how to do it? Let's do everyone together. First one up, first step. One, two, three, four, five, six. Got it? So that's a palmar view to dorsal view. So whatever we're talking about IOTs is basically as simple as IOT should be doing things from that are palmar to a dorsal. That's very quickly. But sometimes with the silos and everything that we do in our industries, we have to go through six different stages in order to get things done, right? But sometimes the six different steps are important when it comes to privacy and security as well. So I'm not saying six steps is not good, but I'm saying there are a few things that we can do that is so quick, right? To move from a torso to farmer. Uh, so let's talk about the world internet users. You know, if you look at from 1995 to 2018, you can see the increase in internet, internet users around the world, right? So we have 55% or above internet users across the world uh, and the percentage of popul world population uh, with so many millions of users. But if you want to look at internet penetration, uh, this is very confusing because you don't know what is the penetration rates. But if you go back to looking at the internet penetration rates, you can see North America at 95% of users uh, Europe being second uh, with 85.2%. Um, in Asia and Africa, the two countries that are still 50% less. But across the world, you see a huge increase in the penetration rates as well. And not only that, you know, what's happening across these penetration rates is also how people are connected, right? So if you look at the connected devices, by 2020, we have 50 billion. Uh, Mr. Levy this morning said about 2025, there's an expectation of 100 billion, right? So there's a connected devices uh, by 2020, 50 billion. The connected devices per person by 2020 is 6.58. In other words, you know, people are connected to at least six to seven connected devices around them by 2020. Uh, personally speaking, you know, I use like, I looked at my own connected devices. I think I have 15 to 20 devices on my phone that I connected. So, I mean, you can imagine that I'm already connected to 15 to 20 devices, so I can imagine in the next few years, people are always looking for connected devices. If you look at the smart home market, uh, you know, smart home devices, there's a $53 billion uh, market uh, by 2020 as well, so which is really big. And there's also a study done by uh, Gartner Research, they said enterprise adoption by 2020 is 65%. So 65% of enterprise uh, are adopting to IoTs by 2020 as well. Uh, there is a study that's been done and they found that there's a positive ROI. 94% of the enterprise companies that looked at uh, 
IOTs found that there is a positive ROI. So everybody from Gartner, SAP, Pew Research Center, they found these are the reasons why IoT platform is something very important for our travel and tourism industry, right? So let's go back to what is IoT in general, right? You know, I want to look at what is IoT in general. It's a network of dedicated physical objects. You know, we call it devices, but it can be physical objects that contain embedded technology. And it's used to communicate and sense, of in, sense or interact with the internal and external environment, right? Uh, so this is one of the definitions which is important for us to look at, that the physical objects or things or embedded technology should be able to communicate, but at the same time sense and interact. Uh, most of the time, the technologies that we have uh, in a traditional world, you know, they don't interact with us, right? You know, we always have to find out what's going on with them, right? So, so let's look at the interest over time. One of the reasons not everybody knows about IoT is like people don't know what IoT means, right? You know, but this is a Google trend that I did uh, very quickly to look at what's happening between 2004 and 2014. There was nothing going on. People have no clue what IoT means. The blue Color here is an IoT search term, and the red one is an Internet of Things search term. So obviously you can see that uh, after 2014, most people started searching for IoT on Google, more than you know, just Internet of Things. Uh, so that's 90% of penetration, evolved inter interest over time in the world, which is really, it reached the peak uh, in 2017, and it's still at 90% of interest across the world uh, even now. So Internet of Things is going away. Most of the people are calling it as just IoT. But if you go on to look at worldwide interest over time, according to Google Trends, uh, you can see these are the countries that are, have the highest you know, IoT search term interest. Uh, and this is important because Google almost have 75% of uh, uh, you know, search rate. And if you look at their trends, uh, Spain is in the top 15. Uh, if you look at Spain as a, con you know, as a country, it's like top 15, 83% of interest uh, over time, uh, whereas the, the islands here is 58% here. So this is very interesting. But you can see South Korea, Japan, Singapore, India, Taiwan, Hong Kong, these are all the countries that are on the top uh, when it comes to uh, Google trend for interest over time. So there's definitely a great interest. So why IoT is important? Because when you connect these assets, processes, or personal uh, things around you, what it does is it captures the data and the events, and what it will do is it will help you to learn the behavior and usage of travelers and customers. But also, it helps you to augment and transform different processes across the business, and at the same time, react, react to a necessary action. And I think this is very important in our industry because, as you all know, you know we don't do things that really create great uh, experiences for our travelers. Uh, according to Gartner Research, IoT also is at a level of uh, at a place where people call it as in the next five to 10 years, it's gonna have a, a slope of enlightenment. It's gonna go into enlightenment. These are all the technologies that they research, uh, similar to innovation diffusion theory, if you know it. Uh, Gartner does the research on innovation trigger, the peak of inflated expectations based on business model, and then the throw of uh, dis disillusionment and the slope of enlightenment. If you look at IoT platform, it's on the peak, on the blue color, which means this plateau will be reached in five to 10 years. Uh, so it will reach the mainstream customers, not just the innovators and explorers, uh, but also the mainstream customers as well. So let's look at what's happening around in terms of our economy, in a world economy. Uh, there is a fundamental shift uh, in the next last five years. I can show you, I've done a research on millennials, in our own university, we have 34,000 students in our university. I looked at their behavior, and you'll be surprised how many of us use devices and technology, right? Uh, so we live in an experiential creative economy. What that means is, uh, you know, in the past, we used to have an agrarian economy. We extracted from the goods and commodities, and we sold them and trade. But eventually, we went on to become making things, which is industrial economy. Uh, from there, we went to a service economy, which we deliver services. Uh, but now we're already in an experience economy where we stage experiences, right? But also we are, we, you know, we are in a new economy called creative economy, which means we need to create value. So value-added experiences is the most important uh, thing right now for our travelers uh, in our tourism industry. And this shift is something that you can see 
uh, in this day and age, if you're not offering this value-added services, you will lose your travelers very soon. Uh, when it comes to IOTs, it's not just the sensors, the technology, and things like that, but it's a merging of real and virtual world to deliver new and advanced services to travelers, which we call as a digital business, right? This is the most important part everybody's talking. But in the framework of digital business, there is also something else, what we call as algorithmic business. What is that? It's basically the use of machine learning, deep learning, AI. This is all the framework of where the automatic business comes in, algorithm business. And also there is another level where IBM Watson added what we call as a cognitive business. In other words, it's creating new traveler experiences and reinventing the operations and transforming the businesses across. These three uh, are the reason why we have to change the way we do things, right? It's not just the digital business now. You have to use machine learning, deep learning, and AI in the back end in order to create these cognitive business in order to understand what travels are looking for. So there are benefits, you know, from, from every day you look at IOTs, it also enhances services. If you look at Disney, uh, how they use the wrist brand in order to look at how many people are going on rides and how long is the waiting time, they were very efficient. So they enhance the services in the theme parks by using just like a wearable. But also well-being. If you look at Singapore as an example, as a smart city, uh, they looked at their uh, baby boomers, the older generation, and they found that older generation need more help in terms of their health. So they use like improve the well-being of older citizens by using IOTs. Uh, we did a study on uh, machine learning, uh, used it to actually enhance engagement of a hospitality venue and a big tourism uh, company. Uh, we increased their uh, engagement and also generated the revenue for them by using uh, machine learning and IOTs. But also it has internal benefits. It's gonna help you with costs, if you use it appropriately. It will improve safety and security. It will also optimize assets, but also conserve resources. So there are external and internal benefits when you use them appropriately. You don't wanna use IoT just because you wanna use IoT. You wanna use IoT if you really have a particular need, and also how you wanna use it a business function, and what kind of protocol you wanna use, and what kind of sensor and controller types you want to use, and how, what activity you want to control in different domains. And obviously, all the domains that we see here, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Levy did talk about all these different domain, domains already, right? The smart city and all. But retail, office, logistics, home, vehicle, medical, whatever it is, you have to either control and measure these things using different protocols. IoT does use all these different protocols. It's not just the cellular, Wi-Fi, it's also Bluetooth, the Z-Wave, the Zigbee's, the MEMS, the TCIPs, the HANS. They use these different networks in order to create these experiences and use different sensor and controller types as well. And that is very important for us to understand the broader spectrum of IoTs. Uh, if you want to look at the endpoints and devices, there are mobile devices we use. It's not going to go away. I think we're always going to stick to our mobile devices. Uh, 4G LTE, Wi-Fi is important. We we're going to go back to the stationary machines, high power, high bandwidth, IoT gateways, uh, eventually sensor devices, stationary devices, which are more medium bandwidth, uh, and mobile machines and beacons. These are all the ones that we'll use very soon in order to interact between di different device types. Uh, but also there are different dependencies, right? You know, uh, you have to use IOTs when you know that what level of human interaction is important to you versus where you can integrate IOTs. Power requirements, integration requirements, uh, reliable connection already there, cost, uh, distance and physical constraints, amount of data that you want to use, security, privacy, right? Whether it's a new property or it's a you know, old property, the green versus brown field, if you know it. Uh, real-time performance. These are all important for you to understand uh, whether you want to integrate IoT or not, right? Uh, in our innovation lab, we call it Hospital Innovation Technology Lab, uh, we test several technologies. Uh, we have augmented reality devices. Uh, we do robots. We're testing robots right now. Uh, we have done virtual reality in the past. Uh, we have uh, social robots versus service robots. We are also using new platform called Internet of Sound. We're using sound to actually transfer data between devices as well. And this is very exciting uh, for us, uh, which is the next level of IoT, right, uh, that we're using. But we also focus on IoTs. So I'm going to quickly focus on two micro projects and one macro project that I'm working on IoT platform. 
and you know what will wrap up very quickly. The first thing is we partnered with a company called Fresh Hospitality, and they are wing called Fresh Technologies. Uh, this is a greenhouse where you see you know, every other greenhouse that you use, but this is more IoT based. So we use uh, beacons uh, in here. This is the student actually graduated from uh, the program and then started his own company and the Fresh Hospitality invested in it. Uh, he uses a Bluetooth uh, beacon to test the weather in every part of his uh, greenhouse. He uses uh, Raspberry Pi. I don't know how many of you know Raspberry Pi and Arduinos. These are the two devices that are very critical when you integrate it. We print all of them in a 3D printer. None of them is available, so we use 3D printer to connect it to a cloud. Uh, so we use uh, lighting depending on how much sunlight you have, versus how much sunlight you need. Uh, we have a device that's more of a, what we call as a farm bot. I'm gonna show you what is farm bot very quickly, where it's AI based open source uh, device, uh, and we have a mo moisture sensor on how much water is needed, how much water is required. All these are done with 3D printing and then you know, in-house. Uh, but here is a simple video of what a farm bot is. You know, a farm bot is a AI-based device. Uh, hope this video works. Let's see. Uh, so this is done by a company in California, but it's open source. Uh, we took the idea from them, and then now we are trying to put it together. In fact, I'm actually doing this in my own house, in my own backyard very soon. What it does is it actually takes care of all the seeds that you need. You, it waters them precisely to the level that they need, uh, but also it knows the weather around it. It senses the weather, and it will uh, actually look at what kind of uh, uh, temperature and moisture the soil has and how it can be grown and all. Uh, why this is important? Because food is an integral part of our world, right? If there is no supply of food, then you know what? You lose it. But a lot of these different technologies, IoT devices, sensors and all, is going to change the way we're going to grow food in the future. Whether it's your backyard, whether it's a high-end, you know, a large scale of things. But it's simple as you use your phone, you want to design how you want to grow your, you know, your plants and greens, you design it on your mobile phone, you select it exactly, and then you know what, it does automatically. Uh, and this is going to be a, a simple example of what AI, machine learning, at the same time, your IOTs devices are integrated in order to understand how you can do it in your own backyard. And this is open source. We use this open source and we divided it and we uploaded it very well in order to do it. The other one is we working with Marriott. Uh, we got a chance to go to Marriott International Headquarters. We saw their IOT guest room lab. And this guest room lab is something amazing. Uh, if you all know, the difference that they have is on a vertical level, they use fiber optics. At a horizontal, they use uh, cat phi e which is enhanced cat phi e uh, to you transfer the data. We also have CAT6 and CAT6A right now. So CAT6A is a new version of cable that you will use in order to use augmented. Uh, but also 5G in the future you know, will really change the way we're going to use this CAT6-7 uh, in the future, which will, have the, which will be important for smart cities as well. But here in this example, you can see everything from TV to monitors and screens. Everything has a virtual assistant that you can have that will wake you up in the morning. It will know your schedule. It will open the blinds for you. It will do your coffee for you. It will also teach you, you know, your fitness in the morning automatically, depending on what you like. Uh, so these are all where the hotel industry is also moving in terms of customizing and personalizing these experiences. Uh, we are doing something similar in our innovation lab. But we're not only just using IoT guest room lab, we're using different uh, platform, which is iOS, Internet of Sound, in order to do some of these things. Uh, but when you look at smart town or smart cities, in WVU, Morgantown, we have a PRT, which we call as a personal rapid transit. It started in 1975, funded by the tourism board. 15,000 rides, like similar to any airports. Uh, five stations within the campus in our own campus. It's an unmanned tram that travels 30 miles per hour. Approximately 83 million people traveled in PRT so far. Uh, this is a, you know, not 2018, guys. This is like 1975. But the technology that you're seeing is way advanced, right? Uh, but when we started working on this PRT system in 1975, it was great because we have three campuses in Morgantown, uh, 30,000 students. So obviously students need to travel, so it's hard for people to really go to one place to other place. Uh, so what happened was traffic issues, so on and so forth. 
so there is no way you can go between the campuses. And students always complain because they don't have transportation services. So in 1975, this technology, what we call as a personal rapid transit, is only available in our university at WVU. When we implemented this, uh, it's going to look like uh, as simple as, I want to show you at one point, it's as simple as a tram here. So these are the trams that's available in our university uh, that goes around the five different camp stations. Uh, unmanned trams, controlled everywhere, uh, which is amazing for those times, 1975. But one thing they did not understood, you know, one thing that we have challenged with it is three campuses, people, students traveling around. What do you think is the main challenge for us, guys? What is one of the biggest challenges for us? Is students complaining that they cannot look at their emails, e-campus, and so on and so forth. So obviously, when they built it, we never had problems with, you know, transportation. But transportation is a problem, not a problem now, but connectivity is a problem. Because students want to look at their emails, work, and their trams also want to have Wi-Fi, and so on and so forth. So what we did is, uh, we are the first university that launched a super Wi-Fi. What is a super Wi-Fi? A super Wi-Fi is a use of the white space network. When television went from analog to digital, we used the analog space frequencies in order to you know, send signals that we can use huge data. I think the vice president today was talking about you know, IoT network here in the, in the island where the, all the island is connected. In a similar way, we started this in 2013. We are the first university that utilizes the TV broadcast services. Within the eight mile radius of the university, you don't need to change your Wi-Fi. You have Wi-Fi available across eight mile radius. And imagine what this can do. This whole place in a whole town, once a visitor comes in, once you connect to it, then you have information around this eight mile radius. And this is a game changer on how smart cities should be looking in the future. Now students don't complain about PRT. We have real life information of whether PRT is down or PRT is running. Uh, because there are sensors everywhere, videos everywhere, cameras everywhere. Of course, we have a lot of connectivity across the university. Students have no issues with Wi-Fi whatsoever. So what does that mean? These are the challenges that we have in terms of uh, you know, IoT implementation. There's a lack of data scientists. 75% of people say that in order to achieve potential IoT, you need more data scientists. There's a lack of perceived value. There is a cost to it, right? 36% complain that there is a concerns of security as well, but also concerns with price. If we can take care of these things uh, and use IOTs at the right place at the right time, then you can really use it to really enhance uh, services, health, well-being, uh, but also in our tourism industry, create experiences that are very important for our travelers. Uh, but this is where I think we are going. If you look at the current what's happening, travelers are adopting to IOTs with digital business, algorithm business, cognitive business, they evolve, there is an IoT evolve, evolving across in the next five, 10 years. And what will happen is IoTs will become agents of travelers. What that means is now if I have 15 different connected devices in my phone. My phone sends me signals on, hey, you need this today in order to do it. So it's going to motivate my behavior in order to what I should be doing. For example, thermostat or uh, protect or your car, you know, I have a car that's connected in here. It will give you an information of it needs service, it needs something, right? In a similar way, IOTs in the future will become as agents for travelers. So in the future, industries, companies have to interact with IOT devices in order to interact with the travelers as well. Uh, that's where I think we are heading in the future because we'll be dependent on the IOTs because uh, there is a reason for it. Uh, here are the few insights I want to throw in here uh, very quickly. If you look at multitasking, now people ask you, are you a multitasker when you go to interviews? But multitasking as a word first was used in 90s for Windows. But now we ask people to do multitasking. But IOTs, if you use them rightly, they can do the multitasking for you, whereas you as an individual don't need to worry about you know, a lot of things. As much as we worry about security, you have, I have outdoor cameras in my home that will send me signals whenever I want, wherever I'm in the world. Uh, my wife is doing coffee there, but I get a signal that the coffee is ready <laughs> on my phone even here. So, you know, you're connected in a world, even in US, I know exactly what's happening around my house, inside my house, from my phone right here. So obviously, I don't need to do that multitasking. The technology can do the multitasking. But again, uh, you, you want to use it at the right place at the right time. 
Internet is also becoming like an electricity that is less visible, right? It morely embedded in our lives, for good or bad, right? Uh, there's no way you can stop these things, but you can also use them at a appropriate way uh, that we are using in our uh, in, the, in our uh, innovation lab. Uh, but also, IoT is also an answer for scientific management. If you know what scientific management is, it's a best way of doing things, right? It's a shortcut of getting things done efficiently and effectively. Like I said, instead of doing six different steps, you can just do it in one step, right? So sometimes you need those six steps when it comes to safety and uh, security. But if you have to do it in one simple step, IoTs can do it for you. But also it has a capability to change the way we compute. Right? In the future, the wearables, some of the wearables that I'm using, augmented reality and things like that, will change the way we compute itself. So it's going to be a augmented world in the future where people are always interacting with holograms, experiences, and so on and so forth. I like the video uh, Mr. Levy showed us this morning where restaurants are creating experiences of how the food is done, creating experiences of the food itself, uh, but also the experiences travelers are getting across uh, when they go to museums, when they go to uh, historic places. Uh, it's great for sustainability, it's great for, uh, you know, the experiential uh, value economy that we have in the future. So if we use it in a right platform um, and integrate these multiple devices, there is a great opportunity for our tourism industry to do great and new things in this coming world. I think that's what I have for now, uh, but if you have any questions, uh, I'll be available after the session, but after, after the session as well. Thank you so much. Okay, we got...